If you want to be a coach, you have to get accredited and take a test and coach people. You want to be a referee, you have to go on a course, you have to pass the test, and then you have to referee lots and lots of matches. But if you want to play a sport, you just play it. And that's the way it should be. Or is it? In a recent Reddit post, somebody was discussing the things that they had heard during a round robin event. A round robin is basically a mini league where each person plays against each other. And some of the funny things that people had said, and feel free to talk about them, especially number three, because that's just really quite funny. Getting on the tee after a serve is unfair. Anyway, I made a facetious post about suggesting that perhaps there was time for a squash license. And at first, as I said, it was facetious. It was just supposed to be a little bit funny. But over the last few days, I've been thinking, would it be such a bad thing? So why do we need a squash license? Well, it wouldn't be simply to just stop arguments. It would be to ensure that everybody's getting the maximum amount of fun out of the game. Now, here's how I think it could work. Number one, registered coaches would be trained to administer the squash license test. It would happen when needed in any particular area. It would work with, for example, say six people. Six people would come on court and apply to go on the squash license course, and it would last one hour. And for the first 45 minutes, the coach would go through three different aspects. Number one, safety. And this would be to do with movement, making sure that people are not bumping into each other, making sure the swing is not very wild. Now, at this point, I want to say it is not a coaching course. It's not teaching people how to play squash. It's teaching people how to get the most out of squash. The coaches are already doing coaching courses. Why do we need to add to that? We don't. We just want to make sure that people are having a safe time. So part one would be safety. Part two would be what I'm calling enjoyment, understanding the different balls, how they bounce in different conditions, who should be using each ball. And I think that this is a key area that would help a lot more people enjoy squash and also perhaps stop a few arguments about which balls should be being used. Uh, shoes, making sure that they're not marking, preferably designed for indoor sports. And then enjoyment, just any other things that might be related to having fun. And then the last one would be rules. So part three, rules. And that would include the basics of strokes and lets. And when I say the basics, I really do mean the basics. For me, if you can't access the ball, if you can't get to the ball, that's probably a let. If you can't hit the ball because somebody's in the way or because it might be dangerous, that's probably a stroke. So that's really how I'd be teaching it and I'd be showing some examples. And then some basic scoring. So that second example, I don't play to best of two, I play, you know, death, whatever the phrase was, I can't remember it now. So to make sure that there's no little mistakes about the basics of scoring. Now, the cost would include the coach's time, the, co the court costs, the actual license, which I'll talk about in a moment, and the any administration. Now, we live in the 21st century, so we should be using all of the technology available to us, and that includes smartphones. So this license would only be digital. It would be stored on a database, and it would be displayed with a QR code, so somebody could see, oh, I've got my license. So you, you, know, you show the code, you, uh, you sh uh, somebody scans the code, and it says, you know, Philip Marlowe has passed his basic squash license. Now, yes, those things are probably not super, super cheap, but they're not super, super expensive either. Building a simple application and storing it on a, on a web server is not a huge amount of money. Uh, and if somebody really wants to hack into that and then you know put their name on it, well, fine, we're really not gonna worry about that. So uh, going back to the uh, what the course would consist of, it's the 45 minutes of those three parts, the um, safety, the enjoyment, and the rules. And then the last 10 or 15 minutes would actually be the test. The test would be there, and it would be done 
on a mobile phone. The test would be on a mobile phone. You have a series of questions, but they wouldn't be yes or no answers because that's too easy to guess. Um, and then at the end, the coach or examiner, we'll call them, can just say pass or fail. And if there's a doubt, he can clarify or she can clarify any of the points that maybe all of the students have made the same mistake. And then in that case, then that's actually down to the coach not explaining it properly. He can be clarifying that. And then if he feels or she feels, sorry, if the coach feels that these people have passed the test, then he can pass them. And it's immediate. It's done. There's no sitting down and posting. No, we're 21st century. Let's use it now. Dreaming ahead, perhaps we could have more advanced licenses and the top license would be the PSA. And what would that include? Well, it would include understanding the basic economics of the tour. It would include understanding how the referees work in a professional setting, understanding behavior. And if they want to get their tour card, they've got to pass this kind of test. Now, that might already happen. It's been years and years and years since I've had any involvement with the PSA. So that might be happening. Uh, other ones could be like a tournament test. You can't enter a, like a national tournament unless you've got this license. Again, it would explain you know, the requirements of those players. Now, clearly, I haven't made a proper proposal to the World Squash Federation. This video is just for people to talk about it to laugh at it, to think about it, to ignore it. So this is just the first step. And one final thought that if we can get people to take their squash license, we can get them to go into squash clubs, we can stop some of the you know incidents that happen, we can introduce them to coaches who can then maybe sell their services about actually having lessons because I think that that's a huge thing uh, to get more people to play squash because if they're doing it properly, they're enjoying it more, if they're enjoying it more, they play more often. So that's the idea. Should we have a squash license? You got any comments or questions or suggestions or doubts? Post them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them as quickly as possible. And remember, Remember, it's just a, an idea. Let's talk about it and see if we can take it any further. And remember, do something every single day to improve your squash. See ya.